welcome back to Monday technical presentation section. Uh, my name is Wai Chong and I'm going to talk about the introduction of BOA and the applications. So basically, these are the main contents that will be present today. Okay, first of all, what is BOA? So basically, the definition of BOA is a, a WAF which consists of a ball with a hole in it. So a ball waft is actually a quarter turn rotational motion waft that use a ball, a ball shape this to stop or start the flow. So in order to allow the flow to passing through the ball, uh, so to, uh, passing through the waft, so the ball will rotate to a point where it is in line with the uh, hole through the uh, pipe open, uh, inlet and also the outlet. And in order to close the flow, the ball is rotated so that the hole is perpendicular to the flow and block the uh, flow from uh, passing through to the downstream. So this is the basic definition of a ball waft. Next, let's look at some main components of a ball waft. Basically for ball waft, there are five main components. Uh, there's the major one, which is uh, two at the outer, which is the body closure. And then for the inner one is the ball, seat and also the stem. Uh, of course, in the WAF, there will be a lot of other different components, but these five are the major ones. And here I have a, a sample picture to show you. So this is actually another design of ball WAF. It's uh, considered as a ball WAF. So you can see there are quite many different other, uh, quite many other components inside the WAF. Like you can see this is a, a WAF body. This is the closure. This is the ball stem, lever, start bolt, nut, and so on. Depending on the design of your ball wire, the components will, might be different accordingly. Next, type of body construction. So basically for ball wire, they can be categorized into side entry ball wire and top entry ball wire. And for side entry, it can further classify into one piece, two piece, or three pieces ball wire. Let's look at some picture for your better understanding. So this is a uh, one piece ball waft. As you can see the body, it is uh, made by one complete piece of a uh, body. Whereas for two piece ball waft, you can see that uh, the body is made by two pieces, one at the left, one at the right, and then they are joined together using the start ball and nut. So that's why we call this as a two piece body. And for the three pieces body, they are actually made of three pieces, uh, made of two closure. One is at the left, one is at the right, and also the main body at the center. So this is what we call as a three pieces ball. Uh, for top entry ball, uh, the entry of the component will be from top. So you can see that there are a lot of start ball at the top and in order to uh, close the waft after we have uh, put in all the component inside the waft. So for this, uh, for this uh, side entry ball waft, it is normally easy to assemble and also the trim component, we can align it more easily. However, when we need to do the maintenance or service, we need to remove the, the side entry ball waft from the pipeline and do the maintenance. Uh, on the other hand, for top entry ball waft, if when we need to do the maintenance or service, we don't need to remove the whole waft from the pipeline. We just need to open the top, the bonnet, or we call it as bonnet of the waft, and then we can uh, replace the soft part or maybe some uh, trim material inside. But uh, there is one disadvantage is uh, normally this top entry ball waft will be made by a casting material and normally require additional NDE to make sure that there's no leakage on the body. And for top entry ball waft normally will be used for high pressure application that require less service or maintenance. Next one is a uh, type of internal ball. The internal ball uh, can be uh, divided into full ball and reduced ball. What is mean by internal ball is you can see here the internal ball is actually means the space in the waft body, which is called internal ball. The space over here. So for full ball, it means the the internal ball is same size as the pipeline. Whereas for the reduced ball, you can see over here. The internal ball is slightly smaller than the pipeline size. So uh, here, here are the rule of thumb. For 12 inch and below, 
Normally, the wash internal pore will be one size smaller than the pipeline size. For example, when the pipeline size is 3 inch, normally the wash internal pore will be 2 inch. However, when the wash size is 40 inch and above, normally the, uh, the wash internal bore will, uh, will reduce 2 inch smaller than the pipeline. So here is another example. When the pipeline size is uh, 18 inch, so the wash internal bore size will be 14 inch. Now, uh, when we will use full bore is uh, when the application requires low flow resistance. For example, a pump suction pipeline. When there is a pressure drop, it will affect the pump performance. So we will normally choose a full bore wash uh, for the application. The another, application uh, another application is uh, when the flow containing mixed liquid and solid. So if you use a uh, reduced bore, it might cause the uh, restriction of the flow, which can cause the bacteria and cause the buildup. Another application that we normally use full bore is when the pipeline, pipeline requires the peaking requirement. Because in oil and gas industry, uh, sometimes the medium is a bit sludgy, so the wash might be uh, dirty and we require to, to, to do the cleaning using the peaking, which means we will let a peak to pass through the pipeline and also the bore, uh, sorry, and also the wash. So that's why we will need the full bore in order for the peak to pass through the pipeline and also the wash. For reduced bore, normally when we will use it uh, when there is no requirement, uh, when the pressure drop, turbulence in the flow, and material characteristic are not a concern, and also when there is no demand, oh, sorry, when there is no demand on the flow rate. For reduced bore, it is normally smaller in size uh, for the bore, and also the cost is slightly lower. So depends on the application, you will, you will select full bore or reduced bore. But reduced bore is the more common one. Lah. For type of operator, there are actually two type of operator for bore. Lah. One is lever, one is gear operated. So for lever, as you can see in this picture, there is one long handle where we call this as a lever. So in order to open or close the wash, we just rotate 90 degree of the lever to open and close it. So normally this kind of uh, operation, operator will be used for small size wash where they don't require a large top to open or close the wash. For a big size wash, normally we will use this uh, gearbox. So you can see over here, there's one gearbox with the wheel to rotate it. When you, when, you need, when you need to open or close the wall, you just need to rotate this hand, uh, this hand wheel. So uh, for this for this uh, lever and gearbox, there is actually one requirement mentioned in uh, PTS 1131.01. When the wall size is uh, for full bore, when the wall uh, pressure rating is class 150 and it is 8 inch and above, then it will require us to use the gearbox. And then when the pressure rating is higher, for example, 1,500 and 2,500, when the wash size is uh, 3 inch and above, then we need to start using gearbox already. So this is actually can consider as a reference also when, we, when you need to start using gearbox. Next. Okay, next is about, okay. Uh, in order for the wash to connect to the pipeline, there are actually a few different types of end connection, such as uh, flange type, socket type, uh, welding, clamping. So uh, for today's topic, we will only focus on the flange type, which is one of the quite commonly used in the oil and gas industry. And the picture over here actually is showing the flange type connection. So you can see over here, the flange is connected to the pipeline using the bow and nut. And for the flange type, there are actually three different kind of faces, which is a flat face, raised face, and also ring type joint, ring, ring type joint as you can see over, on the left over here. So let's see the first one, flat face. For the flat face boa, you can see the face over here is totally flat. So before we assemble this uh, flat face boa to the pipeline, we will normally put in a soft gasket like this, in order to, uh, when, because when we uh, install the wall to the pipeline, we normally require to apply a high top to close them. 
So this soft casket as is considered as to protect this uh, face of the wa. The next type is uh, raised face. For raised face, oh sorry, for raised face, there will be a round shaped raised face at the center over here, and uh, normally uh, uh, also similarly, there will be a gas soft casket like this to be put on top of the raised face to protect it when we apply the top to close the wall and the pipeline. And another type of the flange face is a ring type joint. So for ring type joint, it not it also similar to raised face but with an additional groove on the raised face. For this, for this groove is actually to put in a metal ring uh, like this in, in between, in between the wall and the pipeline. Why we need this uh, metal ring? Because this is this this type of uh, uh, flange face is normally used for high pressure application. When the pressure is high, if you use the soft gasket like this, the raised face and the flat face one, it will normally deform easily. So normally we will use a metal ring to uh, seal the pressure. So before I continue, let's see any comment. Okay, so next, I will continue with the next slide. Okay, in a WAF, there are different terms to define the parts used to contain and control the pressure. One term is we call as a pressure containing part, and another one we call it as a pressure controlling part. For pressure containing part, as the definition over here, is the part worst failure will create a release of the contained fluid into the environment. For example, you imagine that uh, there's one hole on this wall body. So what will happen? The process medium might leak to the environment and cause harm to a uh, human or maybe the environment, right? And especially when the medium is corrosive or flammable, it will have a severe consequences. So for this, this kind of a pressure containing part, they are actually considered as a critical part in the WAF. And there are normally five critical parts, which is body, closure, body cover, stem, and also the lower trunnion. So uh, for pressure controlling part, this is another definition. Uh, this is the parts intended to prevent or permit the flow of the fluid. Uh, which means these parts are important to control whether the fluid can pass through from the upstream to the downstream or not. For the pressure controlling part, the main parts are ball and seat. They are incorporated together to control the fluid from passing through a, a wall from upstream to downstream. If these two parts are failed, then normally the wall cannot seal any fluid and the, fl the flow will just go through from one side to another side and uh, causing the leakage. Uh, for this part, although they are not considered as critical part, but they are actually quite important in order to ensure that there will be a proper sealing between the upstream and the downstream. Next, sealing method. For sealing method, it depends on whether the valve is a uh, floating type or trunnion type. So let's look at the floating type first which we call as a floating ball. For the floating ball, okay, here is a picture you can see. Normally, the, wall, uh, the ball is free to move in a lateral direction. You can see that it, can, it actually can move uh, freely in a horizontal direction because there's no fixed support at the bottom of the ball. When the fluid coming through from the upstream, it will actually push the ball towards the downstream seat where I circle over here to create a seal. So this is how floating ball seal. But uh, for floating ball, it is normally not to be used in high pressure or large size because of two reasons. The first reason is when the, when the ball, ball size is large, so it will create a high force against the seat, which can eventually uh, deform the seat easily. And another reason why we don't use floating ball for large size is because the, the, when the ball is, is large, it will create a high force on the seat. And this will, 
this will cause the uh, it difficult to operate because it require a very high torque to overcome the seating force. So for the big size one, we normally will use the trinium bore. Okay, here is a picture. For trinium bore, the ball is rotated in a fixed position because there is a fixed support at the top and also the fixed support at the bottom of the of the ball. The top one is a stem. The bottom one we call it as a trunnion. So how this trunnion ball seal? For this one, when the pressure coming from the upstream, it will push the seat against the ball. So at here they will create a seal. So this is how the trunnion ball seal. And for trunnion ball, as I mentioned just now, it is suitable for large size and also high pressure one, a high pressure class because the ball will not deform the seat easily uh, compared to the floating ball. Okay, next. Next is a uh, type of seat. Uh, basically, there, there are two types of seat. One is the soft seat and one is the metal seat. For soft seat, normally they are made of polymer material. So these are the three common type of soft seat material, which is PDFE, Deflon, and PEK. Depends on the condition, uh, we will select which one is more suitable to be used. Here is the sample picture over here. Uh, basically, the soft seat will be used at the upstream and also the downstream to, uh, to seal the wall. So here are the small, small soft seat that you can see. So what is the pros of uh, using the soft seat? They are actually lower in cost because whenever the soft seat is deformed, we can replace it we can just buy and replace it uh, easily. And also for soft seat, they actually can create a high ceiling performance. Some process might require a zero leakage or very tight shut off, then the soft seat will be the choice. For cons, the soft seat might be easily deformed and also they cannot work in high temperature environment because they are polymer material. Normally, when the process medium is more than 250 degrees Celsius, we will start using the metal seated. So for metal seated, it actually means metal to metal sealing, which means both ball and seat is also metal material. Here is a picture. So as you can see, the ball is of course the metal material, and then the seat is also made from metal. For this kind of a metal seat waft, they normally have a good wear resistance and can work in high temperature environment. The, however, the cons is they normally cannot achieve a tight shut off and they will have a higher in cost. So next is about the uh, pros and cons of the uh, BOA. So for the pros and cons, the pro is uh, for the BOA, it is, it is, it is a quick qu uh, quarter turn on and off operation and it can actually create a tight ceiling with a low top. And of course, it is smaller in size than the most other WAF. And some cons of the ball WAF is uh, conventional ball WAF have poor throttling properties, which is uh, related to the control WAF. It's uh, not so suitable to be used uh, for control WAF. And then in slightly or other application, the suspended particles can settle and become trapped in body cavity, which will cause wear leakage of what failure. Okay, before I continue, let's see some comment, if there's any comment. Okay. Uh, hold on a second, uh, I see, let's check the comment. I don't know why the comment is not coming in from my side. Uh, I see Iwan. Wai Chong is East Malaysian. No, uh, I went, I'm a West Malaysian. Okay, then. Okay, I don't know why is other comment not coming in, so I continue my section first. Okay, so. Next, the application of BOA. So, BOA, they are mostly used in the oil and gas, uh, oil and gas industry, but also in. Uh, in uh, some of the other places such as uh, chemical storage and even residential use. So here are some uh, pictures that you can see, like the, you can normally see in uh, surrounding the housing area which to open or close the wall. OK, 
Okay, then. Okay, next. So here are some uh, common design standards used for BOA. So uh, because in in, in this oh, sorry in different industry there are actually different different kind of standard to be followed when you design the BOA. For some country they might follow BS standard. For some country they might follow ISO standard, and some might even follow JIS standard and so on. For oil and gas industry. The most commonly re referred standard is the this API and also the ASME standard. Uh, for API standard, normally is uh, API 60, API 608. Uh, these are the two common ones for BOAF in uh, BOAF design. And for the ASME standard is ASME B16.34, ASME, uh, ASME B16.5, and ASME B16.1. These are more to the dimension design. But of course, they are there are a lot more uh, standard to be referred depending on the industry and also the application of the work. So, okay. so basically these are the presentation content for today. Okay, let's see uh, some question. Yeah, I see another question is uh, what is the main difference in terms of the performance between one, one piece, two piece and three pieces more work? Uh, basically, for the performance side, uh, I would say is uh, when you have a performance side is actually not much effect it, because for the ceiling, it depends more on your ball and the seat. If your ball and seat can create a tight seal, so basically there will be no issue on the performance. But uh, but of course, when you have three pieces, there is a potential leak through the the connection between different pieces. Like for example, the three pieces. Then you have two closure. Then when you join together, there might be potential that they leak through the leakage. But in terms of the ceiling performance, there's not much difference. Okay, uh, I see the question from Sim. Why pressure, why full ball has lower pressure drop and better performance? Yes, there's yet there's still option for reduced ball. Okay, because uh as mentioned just now, for because for some some application they don't require they don't really have the requirement on the of uh, the pressure flow and also the uh, pressure drop requirement so when you use the reduced ball actually you can save cost in terms of the ball size and also the wall space so because when you uh, when you use full ball basically you use the same size between the wall internal ball and the piping so there's actually a safe cost I would say it's more to the safe cost like, for the reduced ball. But of course, if you require like the picking requirement, all this, then you will, need, you will need to go back to the full ball. Full ball. Thank you, you all, and see you all again. Bye bye.